Hi there, this is Cindy Hodnett, your host for Behind the Scenes. We are thrilled today to have a familiar face to a lot of our high point market goers, um, John Conrad, who is executive director for the International Society of Furniture Designers. And we're going to talk a little bit about all of the things the organization's doing and um, and all things design. So, John, welcome. Thank you, Cindy. It's great to be with you. First of all, I, I can't imagine, but for people who don't know about ISFD, um, tell us a little bit about that. Tell us about the organization. Well, ISFD stands for the International Society of Furniture Designers. Um, we, we, we are a, an organization that supports and advocates uh, for outstanding design in, in our industry. You know, frankly, design especially in product for home furnishings, is the creative force that drives the industry's engine. And, and we're here to elevate the role of the designer through networking, mentorship, uh, professional development opportunities, and, uh, and promote their worthiness to support our industry. And, you know, I think one of the great things um, about ISFD is that there's really a, a diverse membership. Just about every every subset of the home furnishings industry is represented. One step further than that is to say that that uh, beyond every nook and cranny that, that, that exists in a home and product that's designed for it, you have every taste level, every opinion about what's good and bad design, that there is in any other group of people you might put together in a room, which we can't do this time of year, uh, <laughs> and and talk to. You know, and I, I think that segues nicely really into to the next um, topic, you know, because I think anyone who has been attending High Point Market for any length of time is familiar with the Pinnacle Awards, just in case there's someone listening who's who is not familiar with it. Talk about the, the Pinnacles, you know, how they – how they got started, how they've evolved, the goal with them? Well, 24 years ago, the Pinnacle started um, as, as a, a next step from what at that time was called the Daphne Award, which was a design award produced by uh, basically by suppliers in the industry who, who really no longer are with us, some of the ones that started that, that award. And, and it was taken over by our board of directors, uh, back in, uh, in, in 96, and uh, this will be the 24th year of the Pinnacles this October, and obviously next year being the 25th year of the Pinnacles and also the 40th year of ISFD's existence. Um, it was designed to, to really a reward a designer, no matter who she or he may be, for great work and and moving the needle, if you will, in terms of popular design in 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 our world and in our industry. Full disclosure, you know, I I of course, as you know, John, have been a judge on on uh, the Pinnacle Awards in the past, and I have to say, it really does speak to what you said about moving the needle forward. I think some of the the previous award winners really really pushed the envelope. A little bit with design, and and I would imagine that that's um, really kind of a subset goal for for it as well. I think it really is. You're you're looking for, I think you're looking for more leading edge design than you are cutting edge. But but uh, surprisingly, in some of our categories, like the maker designer uh, uh, product or or even the student category, we constantly hear from the judges in the competition how cool some of the designs are that these designers and makers are coming up with. Uh, I think a couple of years ago, one of our esteemed judges said, wow, these student designs look better than the professionals. <laughs> <laughs> so you never know where you're going to get this great energy from, but I'm happy to say students are bringing it with them and coming to our industry. We hope more of them do. It's exciting. It is. And and I think, too, you know, one of the things that you've always underscored really with any Pinnacle Award winner is that it also just needs to be something that will be successful with the consumer as well. So while it's gorgeous design, there also has to be the 
sort of the business factor of that worked into it as well. It's one of the five or six um, key points that we imbue our, our judges with before they begin their uh, their review process. And, and every year it, that ends up being uh, the, the month of August. Uh, our, our competition entry entries right now are open and they are uh, going to remain open until July 31st. And and from August 1 to the end of August, our judges from international locations and, and domestic will be doing their review online. Uh, and that's a way that we can keep the playing field level as far as interpretations and uh, non-influence mm -hmm. uh, in, mm -hmm. in the judging process. So, uh, and, and we've, we've found that it's, it's been really good the last uh, four years, five years almost, that we've, we've been doing it on an online basis. I do want to mention to our listeners, the YouTube version of this podcast will feature images of previous Pinnacle Award winners. So if, if folks mm -hmm. want to take a look at that, they can see the, the award-winning product design from, from the last Pinnacle presentation. You mentioned that the um, the entries are now, you're now accepting entries. And I think, you know, it's been such a crazy year so far. Tell people exactly where they can go, the, the website, and kind of uh, walk them through that, that process of submission. Happy to do it. Happy to do it. Um, first of all, the easiest way to, to uh, learn about the competition is to go to isfd.org. That's our very simple website uh, URL, our address. Uh, when you hit the home page, that landing page will have on it the insignia for our Pinnacle Awards this year. We do a, a nice logo for every year's Pinnacle Awards. Uh, and uh, on that front page, you will have clickable access to the Pinnacle Awards entry site. You will have immediate access to the general Pinnacle Awards call for entry guidelines listing all of the categories, listing what you need to know about the product having been sold in the marketplace at some market, whether it be digital or uh, brick and mortar or uh, by catalog. And you will have also the guidelines for the student pinnacle competition at, at your fingertips. Just click on them. You'll learn about them. And then when you're ready, you can click right on through to the entry site and start typing in your entry. Uh, when one starts that, they basically form a an account. It's this is all free to enter as far as creating the account. Now the entries uh, do have a charge associated with them, except for the student entries. Uh, the uh, regular Pinnacle Award entries for members of the ISFD are seventy five dollars an entry, and the uh, for non members it's it's one fifty. So you, you can see it. It behooves one to become a member, which, Pays by the way, you can. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> which, by the way, you can do on that home page in the upper left hand corner. There's a join ISFD button and you click and can learn about the 12 different uh, categories of membership we offer. Fantastic. Now, I'm, I uh, you bring up a good point. I'm, I'm going to. Yeah circle back around in a little bit to something sure. else, but, but sure. since we're talking about students, you know, yes. um, of course, this year at market, we were planning to highlight students in a physical location with the innovation and design awards. But, you know, there might be a lot of folks that, that still aren't, you know, still haven't heard about that. So talk a little bit about the innovation and design awards as well. One of the fastest growing segments of our membership are designer makers, whether they be student designer makers, people that actually design a product and make it themselves, or uh, professionals that have their own studio and make product uh, under contract for a client and, and, and uh, deliver it to them. It is a uh, juried competition. Uh, it is one that is curated for display, as you mentioned earlier. And it is the first of its kind because we wanted to address that segment of our membership that is seriously the fastest growing segment. There is there, it, it ends up starting out with, with hundreds of entries and uh, came down to 
uh, about um, six weeks ago, 26 finalists in uh, six categories. And uh, we are the judges this weekend are finalizing their choices for best of show for professionals and students and the best of each category for professionals and students from the 26 finalists. And there will be uh, monetary rewards and uh, a nice uh, certificate for those winners. Uh, we are also going to uh, do a live, um, a Facebook live and hopefully IGTV live um, presentation of those awards and announcement of the winners uh, sometime later in May, more than likely the third week or so. We're, we're not firm on that date yet, but it'll be in the month of May. Perfect. And and I should mention that this particular podcast is part of the virtual market that's taking place May 11th through the 29th. As those details become available, you know, we'll we'll help push those uh, push those out as well. So folks can take a look at what came in. We'd, we'd love for you to do that. And we appreciate it so much. And and I think the students and, and the young makers that are involved here from all over the country, and, and believe it or not, Canada as well, uh, would love the exposure. And uh, you know, perhaps there uh, might be one or two uh, uh, furniture companies that can find, uh, find a gem in there and a the designer in their product. Oh, that's it. That's exciting. You know, I think it's important to talk a little bit about the importance of design. You know, I think uh, sort of the million dollar question, I guess, or billion dollar question at this point is, you know, what does um, what does everything look like now? What's next? And talk a little bit about how good, thoughtful, innovative design can actually help boost the entire industry, you know, as everyone looks to to get back into normal operations. Well, I, I think I, at the outset, um, I said that, uh, to be honest, that design is the creative engine of the industry, and uh, it's the driving force. It's what starts everything out. I mean, when you ideate from your past experiences as a designer, when you're pulling in elements that you've seen through travels, through uh, wherever you've been uh, on your daily life, whatever you've saved in your mind over the years, and put those together in a, in a product that you feel is going to make a particular consumer happy, and let's face it, ultimately, home furnishings, when they're purchased by anyone, they're purchased with the idea they're going to make them happy. They're going to make mm -hmm. them happy every day when they come home and they see, sit in, use that product or look at. Uh, that's what they want in their dwelling. And and if there's one thing we have been, all of us in the United States, frankly, all of us all over the world, these last weeks have become brutally aware of. I say brutally because we've been living at home. Mm -hmm. We now have a complete understanding of what we want to change when things get back to normal. And there's going to be a lot of purchasing, a lot of pent-up demand coming furniture factories and home furnishings uh, designers and factories way very quickly once things get opened up. And, and frankly, I bet we're going to see a lot of it pent-up demand from the market. You're going to be running. And, and uh, online probably as a result of that uh, through online retail. So I'm kind of going around a rock to get to the point here, but... The point is, obviously, pent-up demand is a driving force. What's happening in the, in the market is anything that's different than what's been there the last couple of years. People are going to be looking for a product with a story, a product probably a little on the contemporary side, uh, something with, with some verve and panache and some energy to it that people are going to talk about when they have it in their home. Uh, I think a lot of that is is going to come out of this period of time we've been living through. Uh, joy, openness, possibly color, great looks that are unusual and attractive uh, in every category are going to be coming forward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I think that's a that's a great um, 
a great prediction, you know, in, in terms of some of the things we might be seeing. And then sort of some of the things we're hearing on the, on the, uh, I guess more the function side would be, you know, people now realize they need to have a, a great functioning home office and they're yes. spending time around the, maybe the dining room table that hasn't been used for actual dining <laughs> in a while. So I mean, you've got a long, long career in the industry, you know, thinking, thinking back over some of the things that, that you've seen and, and how people have responded. What about the functionality? I look back to what you and I used to call entertainment centers, not too many years ago. And what happened to those? They, they became sort of the buggy whip of the furniture industry, along with armoires that people put, quote, televisions in. And now they've transitioned into a, a low silhouette side piece with supportive equipment in that Bluetooths to a wall-mounted television. Or in the case of home office and bedroom with nightstands and so forth, including this, you've got trays that charge your phone or your iPad or your device that uh, you use while you're not using it or while you set it on there. You've got uh, desks now that have a flip-up support panel that you can put a pad on and have that sitting off to the side while you're doing something else at your desk or at your, uh, frankly, even at your dining table. I'm going to give somebody an idea here. You're going to, you're going to want, <laughs> remember they used to, they used to have when we first did what we call gathering tables and dining and uh, they were, they were uh, basically not bar stool height, but counter stool height. And you had storage doors. All of a sudden, wow, a new idea came about because they wanted to be able to store instead of going some other room and getting things to set the table with, it was right there your placemats, your napkins, your et cetera. Well, why not have in the drawers you're pulling out a, a way of flipping up uh, something to hold a device uh, that rotates, that flips down when not in use and goes back in the drawer, uh, having built-in uh, charging devices already in that pull-out tray, um, having a... a, a a number of different supportive things. Remember now we're going, we're going into a period of time coming up in the next two years, literally that you're going to have a lot of wireless communications between devices, even down the road, they're visualizing wireless transmission of electricity, no wires mm -hmm. for electronics, which mm -hmm. goes back to Mr. Tesla's idea a hundred years ago. <laughs> uh, but let's, let's take it. Um, one step further, you and I, all of us in the world, have just witnessed a sea change in how business is going to be done going forward. It'll never, ever be the same again. It'll never be the same. Uh, you can count, you can't count the number of people you know and I know and friends of ours know that have literally overnight downloaded visual uh, communications programs, learned the software, trial or error or otherwise, got got through it, used it. Uh, designers right now are communicating on a three different time zone basis with where products are made, with their clients at, at a domestic factory, and with their own teams visually using Zoom or mm -hmm. uh, the Microsoft version of that, the team, mm -hmm. uh, all of those. Uh, I think recently several people called me on, what is it, Google? meetup mm -hmm. and uh and then facebook is coming up with their own everybody's popped these out in the last four weeks and yeah. people have not been forced to before they've been lazy all of a sudden everybody's gotten on the bandwagon and learned how to do it yeah. overnight technically yeah. overnight when you look at how many decades we've gotten up to this point not really caring about it and all of a sudden in four weeks we really care about it Right. And, and we've and we passed that period of time. So all of that will be considered to be incorporated into almost every room in the home, bedroom, dining room, sunroom, living room. Frankly, I think you'll see this these elements being added to outdoor furniture. Mm -hmm. And you and I know in the last, what, four or five years, primarily in the last two to three, 
bringing the indoors out has been a theme, right? Yeah, absolutely. So it's it's heading outdoors as well. I I can tell you, I was on on a Zoom uh, cast with members of our board of directors uh, on my patio over the over the last mm-hmm. weekend, mm-hmm. and it, it works. I, I think you you might have um, just probably described some of the future pinnacle winners <laughs> that we're going to see in the next yeah. few years. I think you yeah. just provided the outline. So, um, well, John, we'll we'll wrap up. You know, once again, I want to make sure um, you know that we give pinnacles its due. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know, given that it's been you know, the year that it has been and, and yes. things were disrupted. Um, what's what's happening for Pinnacles uh, this fall? At the moment, we're, we're, we're sticking with our plan of having the Pinnacle Awards where we've had it the last two years on the campus of High Point University in the uh, uh, Congdon Health Sciences building inside a beautiful theater in that building. Um, on the 19th, Monday the 19th of October, between the hours of, uh, we have 5.30, we have a student meet and greet, I meet our presenters and our keynote speaker, and then uh, from 6 to about 8.30, 8.45, we have, uh, we have a beautiful reception, heavy hors d'oeuvres, and then we move into the theater for the uh, actual awards show. And this year, like last year, we're planning a very special uh, three-minute video presentation at the beginning of uh, of the event in the theater. Literally, the the house will go dark, and the first thing we'll hit will be this this little three-minute video, like we did last year with the with the theme. What do you do mm-hmm. with an idea? Yeah. So this year, I'm not going to say what it is yet, but uh, it's a secret. But we're going to announce that uh, sometime this summer. Oh. We will look at this plan, Cindy, by sometime in mid to late August and see where we stand in terms of, of uh, what phase the country is in and coming out of COVID right. and uh, uh, social you know, distancing, et cetera, and then act accordingly and, and uh, announce accordingly at that time. And I think that's a, a good reminder. Um, but the best thing is that no matter what, one way or another, we will continue to celebrate beautiful design. One final note, you can't win unless you enter. So please enter. (laughs) That's great. And again, the website is isfd.org. All right. Well, John, you know, as always, thanks so much for your time. We look forward to seeing you again in person very soon. Thank you, Cindy. Take care. You too. Bye-bye.